Hey, Joey Starr here for Roadstar. Today I am in Binghamton, New York. Binghamton was once known as the Valley of Opportunity and they had a strong concentration of electronics and defense related businesses that sustained their economy. IBM was founded in the nearby village Endicott and the flight simulator was invented here. How do you like that? Nowadays, they've leaned more heavily towards services and healthcare. So let me tell you a bit about my connection to Binghamton. Over the years, Binghamton's role in my life has kind of changed throughout. Back when I was a kid, it was kind of a place you would just kind of pass through on the way to somewhere else, usually further north or northwest, going out that way. And Binghamton was a pretty convenient spot to grab a bite or hit the Oakdale Mall or one of the other malls. It was usually a spot to grab a bite to eat, maybe pump some gas, maybe get a little shopping in, again, on your way to somewhere else. Later on in my life, after high school, Binghamton became a place that I would sometimes come to to visit friends that were going to SUNY here. After college, Binghamton became a spot that I would stop that would be roughly half point or a third of the way towards other places like Rochester, Syracuse, the Finger Lake region, and Buffalo. For a while, my routine would include stopping there, getting gas, and then grabbing a coffee and probably some breakfast. Somewhere around that same time or a little later, I had this friend, we'll nickname him the Maharaja. There was a point where he lived in Binghamton and I would come visit him. He actually moved out there with his family. He started off living close to where I live now in that same county. And then after high school, his whole family, his mom and all his brothers and sisters, they all out here to bring them to him. Hopefully, if I can remember where it is or kind of find where it is, maybe we'll visit that spot just to see what the neighborhood looks like. Yeah, I'd come up and visit him. And then what happened was uh, at one point, he broke away from the family, came back to my area. And the Maharaja, a lot of times he didn't have a vehicle, so he would depend on me. And his other friends, of course, you know, we all pitch in and help each other out, drive him around. There were times where he needed to go see his mom. And usually I was the one that would drive him up to Binghamton because I got along well with his mom and his family. So it was a nice breakaway. I get to hang out with him, take a nice car ride up for a good like hour, hour and a half, go see his family, usually have a delicious home cooked meal, and then run him home. So it was pretty cool. That's the role Binghamton played for me at that time. Nowadays, I don't really come up to Binghamton much, but just so happened to be in the area taking care of some other business. And I figured this is a good time for me to record this episode because it was going to show up sooner or later anyway. So at this particular moment, I am in Johnson City, specifically the Oakdale Mall. Historically, there's not a lot to say about Johnson City, except to point out that it's part of what's known as the Triple Cities, which includes Johnson City, of course, Endicott, and the city of Binghamton. And another note for fans of the Star Rock channel and just my hard rock and heavy metal loving friends is that Fred Curry, that you may know as the drummer from Cinderella, was born here in Johnson City. So that's pretty cool, right? Johnson City, besides being part of the Triple Cities, is also part of a larger entity known as the Greater Binghamton area. And it includes a big amount of cities. I'll drop a link down below to the Wikipedia page for this and you'll see a list of cities that are considered part of the Greater Binghamton area. So I haven't decided yet whether or not to do this but I was thinking about taking a drive through the residential area of Johnson City. It could still happen because of a story that I will feed you in bits and pieces. It has to do with pretty much all of the greater Binghamton area. This is a back of ways. It was before college, but after high school. I had this friend, for the sake of anonymy, we'll call him Beck. Beck was a roommate that I had back when I used to live in Thompsonville. Beck was a resident alien from Russia. I lived with him and his sister. And Beck's family lived within a short driving distance of Thompsonville. And his family really liked me. So, you know, we were all cool. Beck's dad at the time owned a dry cleaning business out in Monticello. And he had this errand for us to run. He paid us money to transport some kind of a dry cleaning equipment, like a motor for a certain kind of, every kind of appliance that they have. So what happened was Beck had this Suzu Pup I remember, I don't remember what year it was, but the Suzu Pup, it was my first time ever being exposed to Suzu pickup trucks. I thought it was kind of cool. It was kind of a neat little truck. We went everywhere with it because I didn't have a car at the time. Beck used to drive me all over the place. We had the best adventures <laughs> in that truck. I wouldn't necessarily call this best adventure, but it's definitely a notable adventure. So he sent us out. He says, hey, I need you guys to go out to somebody over in Binghamton. And while we were on Route 81, we broke down. And let me tell you, this would only be the first of a couple of times I had broken down on Route 81 or been with somebody that broke down on the way to or inside of Binghamton. <laughs> so what happened was 
We broke down. Beck didn't have AAA. Calls his father, of course, because, hey, we're running an errand for him, right? Father arranges for a tow truck to come get us. Beck knew that his dad knew a lot of Russian people in the area, friends and business associates. So we had one of them come and tow Beck's truck. Unfortunately, at the time we broke down, it was getting into the later afternoon, early evening, so things were starting to close. So while we were able to get the tow, the truck couldn't get worked on until the next day. So Beck's father arranged for us to stay with a couple of friends of his who just happened to live right here in Johnson City. And I wish I knew where this place was so that I can drive there and show you, but fortunately I don't. And who knows, if I do drive around the residential area, I might pass by it, but I probably wouldn't even know. But they lived in this kind of a condo-like community, like townhouses, that sort of thing. And they had a nice place. Now, while we were waiting for them to come pick us up, because we were basically, we were stranded uh, overnight. So while we were waiting, Beck says to me, he goes, hey, because I know these people, they know my father for a long time. Let's play a little fun prank. And I'm just like, really? I don't, I don't know, dude, I don't, I don't know I'm into that. At the time, I had these really cool looking dark glasses. I wouldn't say they were like Terminator glasses, but close enough where you can kind of make the connection. So wanna be Terminator glasses. He says, do me a favor, let's pretend that you're Russian, just like we are. And then while you can speak, just be really, really quiet. You basically wanted me to act like a character, very similar to the Terminator, real quiet. We spoke when I needed to, and I kept a real straight, like almost Schwarzenegger voice without the accent. And he said the other, <laughs> The other part of the prank was to keep the glasses on the entire time I'm there, except when I'm sleeping. <laughs> he just wanted to play with them a little bit. So that's what I did. Just to interject for a second, at this point, I had been living with Beck probably about, I don't know, three, four months maybe. And I'd pick up a lot of little Russian phrases, a couple of words here and there. So he says as much as possible try to stick to seeing Russian stuff. Because he wanted to convince them that I was Russian and real like cold and brooding, you know, strong, silent type. So we went to their home. Now, by the time they'd gotten around to picking us up, I mean, it was like 8, 8.30 at night. We were starving. They had already had dinner. They were real like A-type people, hard work and that sort of thing. Go to bed early, wake up early, start your day, do a whole bunch of stuff. So then we went there, they brought us in. We were sat in their dining room table and they made us all these hot foods, grilled cheese, some hors d'oeuvres, that sort of thing. So we were having basically finger foods. Now, something to bear in mind too, during the time that I lived with Beck, between the three of us, he and his sister and I, we barely had enough money between the three of us us to make ends meet. We kind of all leaned on each other because none of us really made much money. If anything, his sister made the most money, so she carried us more than, than we carried her. That's for darn sure. So we figured, hey, we, you know, we're at this house and we were starving, so whatever they made, we just scarfed it right up. I'm sure some of this is a cultural thing, but being well-raised Russian people, they had guests in the house. I mean, they just kept making food. They kept offering food, and we just kept accepting. Again, we were hungry, and you can see here, I'm not exactly scrawny, dude. I haven't been scrawny since I was like about eight or nine years old, maybe before that. I gotta keep up this beautiful figure of mine. So yeah, they offered food. I was like, oh, got food? I'll eat it. Just ate it, whatever. Next thing you know, it's like 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, and we've been talking, well, we. They were talking the whole time, mostly in Russian. Sometimes they would ask me a question or whatever, and I would just kind of shake my head. Yes, no. Da. They gave me food. I was like, Spasibo, which is Russian for thank you. <laughs> Beck, he was a pretty good actor himself, probably better than me. And somehow he was able to keep his composure and not bust out laughing. A lot of times he'd speak on my behalf saying, yeah, you know, he doesn't talk much. He had this whole backstory for me where like I was out there, like I spent a certain amount of time probably in like Siberia or something, family tragedy. And that's why I came to the U.S. And how he and his dad just kind of took me under their wing, being a fellow countryman, all this stuff. So a lot of times he was speaking on my behalf because he says I was so traumatized, I wouldn't speak much. And you could see the look on these people's faces. I mean, they were just freaking out. I don't know what freaked them out more, the backstory or just the fact that I was so like, you know, very straight and grim and all this other stuff. I'm basically the completely opposite of who I actually am, but they, I think they felt like their lives might've been in danger. <laughs> So then they put us up in their guest room. I think Beck had the bed and it was only one single bed and I slept on the floor, something like that. And slept the whole time. We had the same exact clothes. And then got up the next morning and they, basically they fed us a quick breakfast and shoved us out. So what happened was Beck's dad had gotten hold of uh, his friend, the mechanic. I guess the transmission had blown 
and that Isuzu Pup. So it was going to be a couple of days for that car to be fixed. So hearing that, those friends, they were freaking out about how like solemn I was. They were just like, hey, you know what? We're going to drive you to the bus station in Binghamton, and we're going to buy you a couple of tickets one way to go home. And then you can make your own arrangements to come back to pick up your truck. But, you know, basically, hey, we're done with you. <laughs> It was nice meeting you, but not really. Um, bye. <laughs> they bought us these bus tickets. They gave us a bit of cash too, saying, hey, we want to make sure that you're on your way and comfortable so you can go straight home. That was their big thing. Get rid of us. That's that part of the story. I'll continue the rest of the story as we visit other places because we're gonna. I'm going to try my best to hit some of the spots that we hit while we're there because, small spoiler, we didn't go home right away. We decided that we liked Binghamton. We wanted to explore a bit. We ended up spending a whole other day Plus, but more on that later. So this is actually the place where we stayed with Beck's father's friends. I don't recall exactly which building it was, but this was the place. This was the, the townhouse's place. Unreal. It helps to have some decent Google Foo skills. You see what I did there? It's like Google and Kung Fu put together. This is the place. As much as I'd like to point out exactly which building it is, or even which specific townhouse it is, I will not do so for two reasons. One, I don't know which one it is. That's actually the biggest one. And second, even if I did, I don't know if they still live there or not, but even if they don't, somebody probably lives there and they deserve to have their privacy. I just wanna pull into a spot where we can get a decent view of what this place looks like. It was a pretty nice place. Not bad. If you have to live in this type of community where there's townhouses and your neighbors are like on top of you to the side of you or whatever, this ain't too shabby. I remember the inside of the place being pretty darn nice. Get a little reversal action here. There we go, turn it around. Oh yeah, I can see the inside. Mm, you can't really see that well behind me, but if you look in the back, you can kind of see kind of window stuff. I can see in there rather clearly, and it looks right. It looks like it's that type of place. <laughs> I'm driving right here like some kind of creeper. People are looking at me, I don't know if they, I'm in their spot. They're wondering who I am, or they're waiting for somebody else. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out of here because it's getting awfully awkward. Oh, nice old classic CRV. I love it. You know, I just drive down this way a little bit, see more of the place. Yeah, it's just the memories are just kind of flooding down here. Yeah, this whole little area belongs to the same townhousing place. Oh, yeah, let's drive up there. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's a nice looking place. See? So I'm driving by. That's pretty freaking cool. All right, so now what I want to do is get some more of it up there. You know, now that I'm looking at this spot here, I think it was up this way because I remember it being more like dense with the townhouses. I mean, you gotta consider this was many years ago. So I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna stop creeping, <laughs> find a decent place to pull over and figure out where my next destination is. <laughs> Quick note of how huge this place is. I've been driving for like a good mile since I last spoke and we're still in the same area. We're still in that same place. This all belongs to the same place. Same townhouses community is freaking huge. So what happens when you find a place like this right on the outskirts of a city like in Johnson City. It's amazing. All right, so I'm at the Binghamton Short Line bus terminal. And from the looks of it, it's not the same place from back when I was here all those years ago in that story that I was telling you. No, it's definitely not the same place. What I remember is, first of all, it was a much smaller place. It was a parking lot. And then the terminal is probably about the size of... If you took like two regular size fast food restaurants, and maybe like one and a half fast food restaurants, space-wise put them together, um, that'd be how big the actual terminal part was. Really small. You walk in, there was a window where you could buy your tickets, and there was like a little bit of seating for you to wait for a bus to come by. 
basically what happened was Beck and I, we were dropped off at that terminal by those nice Russian people that I scared the crap out of by being so quiet. Beck, who was, let's just say he was a bit of a bad influence on me. I mean, he never got me into drugs or anything like that, but he always had these like outlandish ideas. And I was young enough, a little outlandish myself. So usually all it took was a suggestion from him saying, hey, you know, you wanted to go do this, you want to do that. And we're, I'm just like, yeah, what the hell? I don't care. <laughs> what else do I have going on? I'm just a teenager, you know, I wasn't even 20 yet. Yeah, he was just like, hey, you want to explore Binghamton a little bit? Which, that's really not that outlandish an idea anyway. We basically started walking everywhere because, you know what it is, we saw the schedule and we, it was like, well, we can catch a bus within half an hour that's heading home or we can catch the next one, which is in about two hours. So we're like, yeah, well, let's explore a little bit. First thing is, again, we didn't have much money. So the only thing we were gonna, really going to do is walk around and maybe find something to eat. So there was this diner, a small diner. It was either right next door or or two doors down from that short line. Tiny, tiny place. I mean, calling it a diner is almost a stretch. It was like a glorified coffee shop as far as the sizes go. Stool seating at a counter. They didn't even have tables, or maybe they had a couple of tables, but they didn't have a dining room. Very charming, very like classic American diner style, which we thought was cool. And they had this breakfast special. First of all, the place was open 24 hours because Binghamton is an actual city. They had this deal, two eggs, toast with butter, hash browns, and if I'm not mistaken, two pieces of sausage and two pieces of bacon, $2.50 plus tax or whatever. Basically, you're looking at about three bucks for a really nice breakfast. And Beck and I ate about two a piece. <laughs> because <laughs> we were growing boys still. And then we went exploring. Let's just say it's been more than 10 years since I've been to that short line. You gotta expect things to change. And hopefully if things are going well, the economy's going well, it's gonna expand. It's a much bigger short line now. They clearly changed locations. That diner, while I can hope and pray that it still exists, I have no idea. It probably closed up. Their prices were too good. Oh, and besides that the, that deal was really cheap, it was delicious, absolutely delicious. Probably better than most diners you'd go to today, which means they probably don't exist. And I don't know the name of them, so I can't even look them up. Oh well, it was just have to be a fond memory. So what we ended up doing, it was winter time, either January or February, and it was, it was unusually warm for being dead of January. So warm that there was a ton of precipitation and it was all rain. It hovered between, like late at night, it dropped down to maybe 32 degrees or a little bit higher. It was always a drizzle. It was kind of like being in Seattle. It was a constant drizzle, no snow. So we walked around and we were wet, of course, but we didn't care. I mean, we had our winter coats and that was like our rain gear, basically. And we walked all over Binghamton. The thing about Binghamton is, it is kind of a smaller city. It was small enough that we walked overnight. We, we pulled it all night. We just walked all over Binghamton. We were like, yeah, you know, we'll go home when we go home, whatever. And while we were walking around, I mean, we were just uh, taking in whatever sites we can. We have a lot of old churches here. Those are really nice to look at. Churches, cemeteries, storefronts, buildings, both old and new. Schools to a couple of boys living in the mountains. It was a lot of eye candy. And of course, you know, people walking through, you see different people, people that are not from the area that you're from. So we were kind of falling in love with the place. And of course, the whole time we're talking and talking, we're entertaining all these crazy ideas. It's like, hey, you know what? Let's leave Thompsonville. Let's come up to Binghamton. We'll get jobs. We picked up a paper and we started looking at classified as we were thinking about, hey, you know, we'll each get jobs. He had the truck, of course. He figures, oh, it's gonna get fixed. I'm not making this up. He figures he'll get a job being a pizza delivery guy for Domino's, local Domino's, because we found a Domino's and a paper, and I'd find something else. Now, work in a convenience store or whatever. We had this idea, yeah, we'll come. We'll continue to be both roommates, but in Binghamton, if his sister wants to come along, cool. If not, it'll be just him and I. <laughs> Needless to say, it didn't actually happen, but that was the idea we were entertaining. So we spent that whole day and the next night walking around Binghamton. We were freaking exhausted. We didn't give it a I mean, we didn't have any place to go. Barely had any money to feed ourselves. We ended up going back to that diner for our next two meals. Stayed overnight. Spent time in that diner, actually. As long as we kept buying coffee and stuff, they really didn't care. And they were so cheap. We basically lived off of 20 bucks for the next two days. And then finally, we decided, hey, it's time to go home. We'll figure out how to continue our Binghamton plan. And then long story story short what happened was we got back we told his sister our idea she laughed in our faces like we were a couple of idiots and you know what she wasn't wrong we were kind of stupid thinking that way but it was a nice little dream you know and then things didn't really work out long term with us being roommates and I had just gotten out of high school I moved back in with my mom for a bit so that's the deal with that no ill will towards Beck we had a big blowout and stuff and, and things were weird but honestly if I saw him somewhere now if I'd even recognize him I'd be more than happy to say hey what's up you know maybe even give him a hug I mean there was a time where 
where he and I were pretty tight. It'd actually be kind of cool to see him again and uh, just kind of reminisce about this trip to Binghamton and all the other adventures. We, we had a lot of adventures together. I mean, that guy was, he was a bit loco, but that's part of what made being his friend so much fun is because we all need that crazy friend that kind of brings out the excitement in our own personalities that we continue to carry on even after that friendship breaks. You know, he was kind of like an original bad boy. The falling out we had, it was kind of nasty and we almost uh, came to some violent episodes a couple of times, but you know, it's the past is the past. That's all part of growing up and part of life. And I don't know, looking back, I mean, I remember all the fun stuff. It'd be cool to catch up with him once and then go our separate ways again. I mean, we don't have to continue to be friends, but it'd be just kind of cool to see what he's done in his life, tell him what I've done in my life and find out how his sister's doing, his dad, if his dad's still alive. It was a long time ago, so. But those are pretty strong memories I have in this very city. Unreal, you cannot make this stuff up. I'm pretty excited because I found the neighborhood where the Maharaja used to live, where his mother lived, or maybe she still lives. Ironically, the way I found it was, I remembered there was a McDonald's really close by. I, that I always remember because they're very unusual. They were one of the privately owned. So what that meant was that they could, at their own discretion, carry items in addition to the normal McDonald's menu. And they did. Never in my life had I ever heard of, or even since then, a McDonald's serving bratwurst. They were serving bratwurst and they were serving all sorts of sausages, Jamaican beef patties, kind of things you do not associate with McDonald's. And I thought that was unusual, but kind of cool. Uh, it wasn't even that great of a McDonald's, but just the fact that they had that type of menu made it a place that we'd stop by once in a while. So what I want to do now is I want to film the neighborhood a little bit. I'm feeling kind of nostalgic. I'll be honest, I really don't know what happened with this friend, this Maharaja guy. I'm not sure how we drifted apart or why. I mean, we didn't have a falling out or anything like that, but there was some underlying drama through other friends that we had in common. So at best, I can make a guess, but I can't assume anything. And unless I ever see him again and speak to him about it, I guess I may never know. I've absolved myself to being okay with that a few years ago. But it's kind of a shame because there was a time where he and I were really tight and I thought he was a pretty good friend and I tried to be a good friend to him. Maybe I wasn't as good a friend to him as I thought I was. Not for a lack of trying, so it's too bad. That's what happens sometimes in life. You start off, you're on the same page, you have things in common, you grow this strong bond, but over the course of life, people grow apart. That's what happens and it's kind of a shame. You didn't just lose him as a friend, but members of his family as well because the connection was always through him and I kind of felt like they were my friends too. And I enjoyed seeing them and communicate with them or at least finding out how they're doing. And obviously that's something I've lost. And again, it's just something that I've resolved myself to accepting because that's just life. So I'm gonna film the neighborhood. I'm not gonna point out which house it is, but I did pass the specific house. It looks freaking identical to all those years ago. There's a part of me that misses him because we did have fun. His mom was so sweet. And I tell you, she could cook. His mom made food from where they were from. Authentic, delicious, cooked with love. It was awesome. I don't know if his mother still lives there, if Fancy still lives there, but even if not, somebody lives there, you can tell. Whoever lives there now to protect their privacy, I'm not gonna point out which house it is and say, hey, yeah, that's where he used to live. I'm just gonna kind of go through the neighborhood and just drive a little slow to see what the houses look like. This is for me. I'll do that and then uh, I'll move on to my next destination. So this is a little mini mall that we used to go hang out in sometimes whenever he was up visiting. It's definitely seen better days. Looks like some of the same old stores are there. I got a lot of them have closed down. It's kind of sad. This section of the city is kind of depressed now. And it's, a, it's a shame to see. That McDonald's I was looking for, by the way, never actually found it. Like the address was still here, listed as being here, but it's not here. But I'm glad that I followed it because I was able to find 
my old friend's neighborhood. All right, so that's really it for my little trip down memory lane in Binghamton, New York. I had some business to take care of for the area, and I figured while I was here, I might as well take a trip down memory lane and bring you with me. I'm kind of making this for myself and my friends, just to kind of reconnect, but I figured since the world can look me up on YouTube anyway, that maybe some of you would take an interest in some of this or maybe you don't that's quite all right that's going to be it for this episode of roadster thank you so much for watching be sure to like share subscribe stalk and i'll catch you next time